SAS is now part of SkyTeam, but before the change, I got to experience their business class on their Airbus A330. Was their service up to SkyTeam standards? From a modern cabin design to gourmet meals and overnight journey across the Atlantic? Let's find out this together. We will dive deep into the seats, the food, and of course the bed. Stay with me because at the end of the review, I will reveal whether SAS truly lives up to the hype or if they have room for improvement. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to fly SES on their uh, A330 on uh, business class from uh, Boston to Copenhagen. It's going to be an eight hour journey, I think. Uh, just now we're going to check in at the uh, check-in counter at SES. SES uses uh, terminal Echo from uh, Boston. Uh, so we're headed there from the Uber right now. Usually SES uh, uses the Airbus A. 321 for this uh, departure, but today they uh, put in a 330. I think it's because of the Easter holiday in uh, Scandinavia, so it's gonna be cool to review that. In the meantime, you can check out my other review of uh, the A321 uh, uh, LR in business class. After walking to Terminal E, it was time for check in. Well, the check in uh, was a breeze, it uh, went really, really fast. Um, no queue uh, here at all, and uh, were multiple uh, counters open, so really good check-in process so far. Uh, let's go to security and to the lounge. Uh, SES doesn't have uh, their own lounge here, but they use Lufthansa's newly opened lounge, so I'm excited to try that one out. So, yeah, let's see. The Lufthansa lounge is located one level above the concourse on the fourth floor. The lounge is roughly 6,400 square feet, with seating up to 162 guests. One of the highlights is the large floor-to-ceiling windows, which flood the lounge with natural light and offer a fantastic view of the apron. Perfect for plane spotting while you relax. During my visit, the food options were pretty solid, with a variety of salad, finger sandwiches, pretzels, soups and hot dishes, plus a selection of cheese and desserts. It's a decent spot to unwind before your flight, but be aware it can be quite crowded right before the Lufthansa and Swiss flight, so snagging a quiet corner isn't always easy. After grabbing a quick bite, it was time to head to the gate for boarding. Isn't she a beauty? SES operates the Airbus A330 on this route, though they rotate between the A321LR, the A330 and the A350 depending on the season. During the winter of 2024 they used the A321LR, while the summer I saw the A350 in action. Today we're flying on the A330-300, so let's scan our boarding pass and take a closer look at the seat map of this bird. Today's flight is on the Airbus A330-300, which features three classes of service. Economy, known as SES Go, Premium Economy, or SES Plus, and Business Class. Let's start with Economy. There are 174 seats arranged in a 242 configuration, offering the standard experience for long-haul flights. Moving up to Premium Economy, or SES Plus, there are 56 seats in a 232 layout, with more legroom, wider seats, and a footrest for extra comfort. Now onto business class, where we will find 32 seats in a 1 to 1 configuration, each with direct aisle access. The seats are staggered, with even number seats closer to the window for more privacy, while the odd number seats are closer to the aisle. For this flight, I chose the seat 8 Hotel, perfect position for balance of space and privacy. Boarding the plane was a new and seamless experience thanks to biometric boarding. No need for boarding pass or passport in hand. While this technology isn't widespread in Europe yet, I have to say I really like it. Stepping into the cabin, I was immediately struck by its modern, sleek design. The neutral tone of grey with touches of black, brushed steel and subtle orange accents creates a refined yet inviting atmosphere. The materials felt of high quality and added the overall elegance of the cabin. The seats are Thomson Vintage XL arranged in a 1 to 1 configuration, ensuring every passenger has a direct aisle access. Each seat can be converted into a fully flat bed, stretching at nearly 6.5 feet or 198 cm in length. If you are in a window seat, the even number ones offers more privacy with the side tables shielding you from the aisle, while the odd number ones are closer to the aisle. For solo travelers, the even number seats are ideal, but if you need more legroom in bed mode, the bulkhead seats in row 1 are the way to go. Waiting at my seat was a pillow, a bed sheet and an amenity kit, ready for a comfortable journey. 
Shortly after settling in, we were offered a welcome drink with the choice of hide sick champagne, juice or water. The menu were also distributed, but we will have a look at that later. Since this was a night flight, the crew kindly asked if I wanted to be woken up before breakfast or if I preferred to sleep throughout until the landing. If you are new here, my name is Magnus and I'm obsessed with airlines, luxury flying and all about travel. I love maximizing my points to get sweet deals and when my points run low, I use my hard earned money. If you love to see more, check out some of my other videos in the link in the description or on my channel. If you're enjoying this journey with me, pressing that subscribe button would be amazing. It's your support that enables me to share my honest reviews and give you an unbiased review of airlines. Now back to the video. Let's start as always with a detailed seat tour. Right in front of you there's an 18.5 inch glossy touchscreen TV. While the screen looks sleek, the glare can be a bit much in brighter condition. Below that you will find the footwell, not the largest but sufficient for me. Toward the aisle by the foot there's a magazine holder for safety cards and other small items. Interestingly, there's also a second magazine slot near the TV, along with the coat hook. On your side you got a spacious console with a tray table stored inside. The tray table easily slides out with a push of a button. It is sturdy and offers plenty of room, but keep in mind that you're stuck in your seat once it's fully extended. The console itself has a large surface, perfect for keeping things within reach, including a convenient dent cup holder for your drinks. The side panel houses the seat controls and an adjustable reading light, making it easy to get comfortable. Toward the back of the console is a handy shelf for stashing loose items, and I've already used it for my camera gear, passport and other essentials. You will also find noise cancelling headphones here, ready to use. Lower down you will find the universal power outlet, USB-A charging port, a headphone jack and the IFE remote. The IFE remote is not the usual Panasonic remote you will find on many flights, but it's compact and surprisingly easy to use. Finally, at the edge of the console are a quick access button for seat adjustments, including firmness and mood lighting. One more thing to note, there are no individual air nozzles above, so the cabin crew controls the temperature for the entire cabin. As we taxi to the runway, let's take a look at tonight's route. We will be flying 3660 miles across the Atlantic from Boston to Copenhagen with an estimated flight time of 7 hours and 25 minutes. Since this is a red-eye flight, I'm definitely looking forward to testing out the bed later on, but first up is the meal service. And I'm eager to see if SAS can deliver a great dining experience. Once we were in the air, the crew wasted no time and quickly began preparing the meal service, which I really appreciated. On a red-eye flight, getting the meal out fast is the key, since most people want to settle in and sleep as soon as possible. Let's take a look at tonight's menu. For starters, there was a mixed salad with olive oil, balsamic vinaigrette and the choice between salmon or beef pastrami. For the main course, the options were chicken, beef shank or spinach ricotta cannellini. To finish off the meal, there was a selection of cheese and dessert, either a rich chocolate fondant or some fresh seasonal fruit. I went with the beef pastrami to start, followed by the beef shank and of course a chocolate fondant for dessert. I opted out of breakfast, but the morning offerings were a classic Scandinavian fare. Yogurt, granola, marmalade, fresh bread, cold meats and cheese. For drinks, there was something for everyone, from a glass of Charles Heidsieck champagne to a variety of wines. Plenty of options to pair with your meal. As the food serving began, the crew brought out hot towels to freshen up and lay down the tablecloths before serving drinks and warm nuts. I like that SES uses trolley for the meal service, allowing you to see the food before you make your choice. It's a nice touch that adds a bit of personalization to the experience. First up was the beef pastrami with whole grain mustard mayo and pickled vegetables. Solid and flavorful. The beef shank braised in port wine sauce followed. Unfortunately, the presentation wasn't great and the dish was a bit overcooked and dry for my taste, lacking the depth of flavor I was hoping for. Dessert, however, was a winner. The chocolate fondant cake paired with some fresh fruit made for a satisfying end to the meal. With the meal wrapped up and dessert leaving me on a sweet note, it was time to settle in for the rest of the flight. But before getting too comfortable, let's take a look at the amenity kit SES provides for its business class passengers. The kit is from Dux and includes all the essential socks, facial moisturizer, lip balm, earplugs, eye shades and a dental hygiene kit. A small detail I really appreciate is that the bag itself doubles as a shoe bag, which I've actually been using for shoes on other trips. It's a nice little bonus that adds practicality beyond the flight. 
I just want to share some super important thing, especially if you're like me and finding yourself traveling often. Whether it's for work, adventure, or just a quick weekend getaway, one thing we all rely on is public Wi-Fi. But here's the thing. Connecting to an unsecured network can be a big risk for your data. That's why I use a VPN. A virtual private network, or VPN for short, is an app that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. This way, it shields your digital life from the eyes of those that are looking to exploit your private information. That's why I'm so excited to have Private Internet Access, or PIA, as sponsor of today's video. With PIA, you can browse the web securely, even on those sketchy Wi-Fi networks you will find at airport, cafes, or hotels. And here's the best part. If you use my special link in the description below, you will get an 83% discount on PIA, and that's just $2.03 per month. And as a bonus, PIA will give you 4 extra months completely free. An incredible deal, and trust me, your data security is worth every penny. With PIA, not only is your connection encrypted, but you also get access to thousands of servers in over 80 countries. This means you can securely browse, stream, and access content anywhere from in the world, without worrying about anyone snooping on your activities. PIA takes your privacy seriously, and they don't log your activity, so you can browse with confidence. Plus, you can protect all your devices at once, whether it's a smartphone, laptop, tablet, or even your router. So if you're traveling as much as I do, or just want to keep your online activity secure wherever you go, don't miss out on this fantastic offer. Click the link in the description to get started with private internet access today, and lock in that massive 83% discount. Now back to the video. Before settling in for the night, I decided to check out the in-flight entertainment system on board. Unfortunately, on this flight, my screen was a bit buggy. It kept registering random touches and navigating on its own. The crew tried restarting the system, but it didn't fix the issue. It wasn't a huge deal for me since I planned to sleep anyway, and I'm hoping it was just a fault on my seat. Normally, the IFE system on SES flights is pretty responsive, but here is where it falls short. The selection of films and TV shows are quite limited. With only 116 films and 113 TV shows, the content library feels a bit sparse. On the TV side, there are no full series, just random episodes which feels like a missed opportunity. SES can definitely take a page from Emirates book when it comes to content variety. The screen itself also has some drawbacks. It's quite glossy, which makes it difficult to see during daylight flights when the sun is reflecting off the screen. However, aside from the, the content and the screen's glossiness, the IFE system is intuitive and easy to use. Plus, the inclusion of external cameras on the screen is a feature that I absolutely love. It should honestly be a standard on all flights, right? After checking out the IFE system, it was time to get ready for bed. But before that, let's take a quick look at the lavatories in business class. There are three on this aircraft, one at the front and two at the back. The toilets at the rear are surprisingly spacious, especially the one on the right side, which even have a window letting in some natural daylight. The cleanness was on point when I visited, but don't expect any luxury amenities here. There was no extra like hand cream or fancy soaps, just the basic, including alcohol wipes and a bottle of air freshener. Back at my seat, it was time to convert it into a bed. One nice feature is that the armrest slides down, giving you a little bit more space to stretch out. The bedding, provided by Dux, included a blanket and a pillow cover that felt soft and comfortable. The footfall was a little bit narrow, and the bed itself is on the firmer side, but I personally found it perfect for a good night's sleep. In fact, I slept through the entire flight and ended up skipping breakfast. I woke up just before landing to a pleasant surprise. The crew had left a piece of chocolate by my seat, which is a thoughtful touch. With a bit of time left, I decided to connect to the Wi-Fi for the remainder of the flight. SES offers complimentary Wi-Fi for its top-tier customers, including Diamond and Gold members, as well as business class passengers. The Wi-Fi speed was impressive with a download speed of around 60 megabits per second and an upload speed of 6 megabits per second. More than enough for streaming or getting work done while cruising at 35,000 feet. A uh, really good flight. I almost slept the entire way. Just ate some food and then I went straight into sleeping mode. Uh, Slept kind of okay, and uh, the food was uh, okay. I think the starter was good. The main course was uh, just okay, and nothing special about it. Uh, kind of dry, and you had to use a little, a little bit of salt and pepper on it. The uh, dessert was uh, nice, and um, the bed was uh, comfortable. A little bit hard, but uh, I like it that way. Uh, 
wide enough for my shoulders. Had enough legroom in the front, so that was uh, really nice. Uh, my screen has been uh, a little bit uh, on and off. Uh, it's very hard to push on on the IP system, but uh, I didn't use it, so it didn't bother me. But it should be better when uh, when the plane is only seven years old. But uh, under I think under A350 cabin, it's uh, a little bit better. A little bit too glossy screen, but uh, yeah, that's just uh, details. So yeah, all in all, uh, good flight, okay meal, and uh, yeah, now we're gonna park. And until next time, have a safe flight.